Prison escapes are often seen in movies. How can a tiny man like Ananias pull it off and conduct the same crime repeatedly without being caught? We want to express our deepest sympathies to the family and friends who were severely touched by this terrible crime before we start the video. We have no malicious intentions and recognize that the people concerned are dealing with a very delicate situation. In this video, we are going to find out why Ananias was given the South African Houdini and why many people still think he is still alive. South Africa is an upper-income economy, one of eight such countries in Africa. The country is famously referred as a rainbow nation because it is made up of diverse cultures, languages, and different religions. It was at this place where Ananias Mate saw an opportunity to leave his family and search for a better life. Ananias Mate was born in 1976 to parents Zephaniah Mate and Sapphira Matthews. He lived with his 10 siblings in Shai Shai, Mozambique. Mozambique is a neighboring country to South Africa with just four border crossings and a 2,454 kilometers driving distance. Shai Shai is separated by two, the rich in the resorts, with a lot of cash, and on the other lies a small village living in poverty where Ananias and his family lived. Neighboring African countries have a history of moving to South Africa in search for employment and possibly have their way out of poverty. Ananias is said to have dropped out of school at the age of 12, which led him to run away from home because he was afraid his mother would punish him for dropping out. It is also believed Ananias then joined a military camp in Mozambique. The Mozambican military is said to be no ordinary military. Anyone that was part of the army was a highly trained deadly weapon. He then later went to Russia to further his military training. Ananias going to military training at a young age was highly disputed and questionable. However, in his event of crimes, it does seem as though he knew more than an ordinary offender. Ananias was known as a tiny man that was not intimidating. Several of his friends gave him a nickname of a rat because he would save himself out of sticky situations. Ananias was able to get himself out of trouble, and he was also known by Mozambican law enforcement. In order to try to lift his family out of poverty, Ananias Mate informed his family that he was moving to South Africa. However, as soon as he arrived in the country, he started committing crime. Most of his crimes took place in Johannesburg, Northwest, Pretoria, and Limpopo. White individuals from wealthy neighborhoods made up his known victims. His first case happened on the 19th of August in the same year. He stalked his victims because he was a small, unimposing man. He broke into Diane and Alwyn's home on August 19th, 1999, and Ananias poisoned the sausage before tossing it over the wall for the dog to eat. The dog regrettably perished as a result. He stole their car and sound system as soon as he got into the house. Additionally, he always had a riffle in one hand and a torch on the other. Ananias routinely poisoned the dog during his crimes because he was afraid it would bark and alert the owners. He employed this strategy for three years to achieve his goals. Ananias would therefore constantly carry a riffle, a torch, and poison from 1999 to 2002, and he would use these to get what he wanted. Ananias broke into Tracy's home on December 2nd, 2003, while she slept in bed in the bedroom with her kid at her side. Ananias Mate then roused her from her sleep and warned her to be quiet or he would have his way with her. He then started to take off his pants. Tracy couldn't see what Ananias was doing, but she could feel what was happening. So, as he was taking off his pants and grabs her leg, she started kicking and fighting back. One of the kicks hit the hand that had a gun on it, and that was when the first shot went off, and it hit her on her left breast, but because she was in shock and fighting for her life, Tracy didn't know she had been hit. 
She jumped out of her bed and ran down the passage, and Ananias ran straight after her. Tracy still decided to fight back. She was fighting for her life. As she was fighting off Ananias, she managed to push through a security gate inside her house, so she managed to lock the security to escape Ananias, and as she was trying to close the door well to her bedroom, Ananias fired two more shots and they hit Tracy, and she is shot again in her chest and once in her lungs. At first Tracy didn't know she had been shot, when she started looking down, that was when she realized that she was covered in blood. She had been shot three times in her upper body, in her left breast, in her arm, and in her right lung. Ananias unfortunately stole some of Tracy's valuables and left her shot three times, and her son traumatized. Tracy did however make a full recovery except for one bullet that was lodged really close to the spinal cord, so they just left it like that. Tracy was able to defend herself against Ananias, but unfortunately others wouldn't be so lucky. Ten days after he attacked Tracy, he committed his first serious crime when he entered the home of a 19-year-old girl from Northcliffe, and he unfortunately had his way with her. Ananias was arrested a few days later after he was seen in a CCTV footage. He was caught in Alberton and was found with sausages that he would use to poison the dogs and a lot of bottles of insecticide. They took him for questioning, but he was later released because they couldn't prove he was behind the crime he was arrested for. Immediately after his release, he continued to commit more crimes, terrorizing and flashing his light on his victims' faces and taking their belongings. In 2004, he was arrested after he was caught in possession of items that were reported stolen in the area. He was kept in custody until he was released on a 500 rand bail. Immediately after his release, he was back to terrorizing people, but at this point, police didn't know he was linked to other crimes. In August 2004, Ananias entered Charles and Julia's house. He used the same tactic of poisoning the dogs when breaking in. Charles heard Ananias get into the house. He then started throwing tantrums thinking it would scare him away, but Ananias just lifted his hand and he shot him in his shoulder. Ananias then took their vehicle and he drove off. On the following day, he entered the house of a 28-year-old woman and forced himself into her. He then took few of her belongings and he left. A few months later in December, he entered the home of a ballet dancer and he had his way with her as well. He also took few of her belongings and he fled. In the same month near Christmas, he entered the home of a lady in Pretoria. Heidi was sleeping in her bedroom when she heard footsteps inside the house. She also saw a torch flashing around. He then entered her room with a flashlight pointing at her. He told her to get up and sit in a couch. Heidi complied, and then Ananias took her hairdryer and tied her legs together. He also had taken the cable and tied her hands together as well. Ananias then leaves to the kitchen. He takes a knife, and he tells her to open her legs because she knows what's about to happen. Heidi tells him to untie her. Ananias then cut the cable with a knife, and he had his way with her. Ananias then asks Heidi for car keys. He took the car and drove off. Shortly after Ananias left, Heidi reported, and when police came, they found Ananias's fingerprints all over. They took them with to the police station, and when they ran them, that's when they discovered that the fingerprints are connected to a fake passport that was involved in other crimes. That's when they found out that all these crimes were committed by the same person. While they were running the DNA, they found a fake passport that was named Ananias Mate. Then on the 31st of January, Ananias was arrested when he was caught sleeping with a woman, but we will get into that in a minute. Ananias was then taken to a Johannesburg prison where he was detained for three months until he escaped. He escaped by breaking off a pipe from the central heating system. He then pulled the cell bars open. After that, he tied his bed sheets together. He tied them down the pole and he climbed out. Halfway down, he stopped and wrote F U on the wall. After his escape, he continued his crime spree in other provinces as well. In northwest, he struck in Russenburg. 
and on three consecutive nights in Limpopo, he broke into a total of three homes. Police kept searching for him and six months after he escaped, he was apprehended and that happened because he broke into a house of a couple, he forced the boyfriend to watch as he was having his way with his girlfriend. The boyfriend then reported the case to the police and Ananias was then arrested and taken to Pretoria C. Max Prison Penitentiary. On the 18th of November, he escaped again, and how he escaped this time was by applying Vaseline petroleum jelly all over his body, and he managed to squeeze himself through the cell bars. Ananias's cell bars were 20 centimeters by 60 centimeters, which is one of the reasons why his friends said he was a rat that would get himself out of sticky situations. The South African media gave him a Houdini name after allegedly pulling that stunt. After he escaped, different sources came out to rebuke the Vaseline rumors. They said Ananias bribed the warden's 800,000 rands. Other sources said that after the guards received the money, they unlocked the handcuffs and the leg irons. He was then set free in Pretoria on November 18th. The money revealed was paid by Ananias's associates, which was further indicated that Ananias was their leader. Three officers were suspended in connection to Ananias' escape and five others were fired. After his escape, police started searching for him, and each time they would locate him, he would find a way to escape them. Investigators then took it upon themselves to go to Mozambique and find out how does this man that committed so many crimes evade police and be so slippery. When the officers got there, they found out that Ananias was a completely different person than he was in South Africa. Officers found out that Ananias was known by police in his country, and they profited off him doing crime. He lived seemingly a different life. Police found out that he had a mother and his father had passed on. He had two wives, seven children, and two grandchildren. Police also reported that, the woman who he was found with in one of his hideouts was his girlfriend, which really doesn't make sense why he took advantage of vulnerable women. Investigators also discovered that according to his family he was working and had been sending them money for food. They had no idea he was involved in criminal activities. One of his wives confessed that men from Mozambique told them they would get him out of prison. Days later they were back and had told them Ananias would take the bus from Johannesburg to come back home which could also explain the bribe to be an accurate story. Ananias was unable to take the bus because all border posts had been alerted of his escape and police were hunting him down. In December 2006, Ananias's reign of terror would come to an end when he broke into a house of a very wealthy woman in Craighall. Cameron woke up and Ananias Mate told her to go back to her bedroom and keep quiet, and during this time her daughter had also woken up, he then told them to lie face down on the bed. Ananias then took her car and left. Immediately after he left, Cameron called a car tracking company that had a tracking device on her car, she then reported it missing to them, so this was during peak hour in Johannesburg. They dispatched cars and helicopters to chase after him. The tracking company revealed that they did not know they were chasing South Africa's most wanted. Ananias then realized he was being chased. He then decided to get off the road. He then got out of the car and started running for his life in a nearby informal settlement. The two men that were chasing him got out of the car and started chasing him on foot. When Ananias saw that they were on his tail, he ditched the bag that he was carrying. As he was running, he also realized that the t-shirt he was wearing was bright and they would easily locate him. Ananias then took off the orange t-shirt and kept running and was able to escape them. He then got into a house where there were two young girls. The little girls then went on to call their father. Someone came and told them he got into that house, so they went in and searched but couldn't find him. An informant told them there was no way he could come out of there, so they went in to check him again and they found him. So, as they were walking him into the car, he had wrapped his shirt around his arm, and officers had searched him but they didn't find anything, and he was not handcuffed, 
as they were walking, Ananias turned around and stabbed one officer under his eye. The officer told him to stop and he managed to take out his gun and shot Ananias and he started running. He shot him the second time and he continued running again. And on the third time he collapsed. Ananias was shot through his femur and he was taken to a military hospital where he was on guard for 24-7 until he made his full recovery. In January 2007, his trial began and during his trial he was always surrounded by police. They didn't want any mistakes this time. He also had his own special cell. Some of his victims that testified in court said that they were really shocked at how small and unassuming he is. Ananias Mate was sentenced to 54 years in prison and he was charged for breaking into 19 homes, 24 cell phones that were stolen, 13 dogs that died because of poison, 7 women he wrapped, 3 people that were shot when Ananias broke into their houses, 2 officers that died while investigating his case and he was convicted for 64 charges, 3 of Ananias's victims emigrated from South Africa. While he was serving his 54 years sentence, he tried to break out at a maximum prison again, but failed after two attempts. Police officers described him as someone that could use any object to break out of prison. He knew what was needed to break out and would make multiple attempts. On the 27th of December, 2016, Ananias died at the age of 40. It was reported that he suffered from constipation and urinary retention at King Edward Hospital after he was sick for just over a month. However, some people believe he is still alive and maybe he is committing crime somewhere else, but some seem to believe that he has died. Please let me know what you think down below.